It is already time for the last say. Personally, I think it's more because I'm in Chaeson, but what would it be like if there are no nets at DYB? No matter where you go, it seems that you will not be able to see someone who keeps up with the passion and skill sets of nets at Chaeson. Michelle, who is going to give us the last say, is popular at Boondong Branch for her warm kindness and clear lessons. Michelle, who shows the standard of DYBN, will be greeted with a big round of applause. Everyone, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. I'm Michelle. I'm the grade six Athena teacher at Boondong. Now, teaching is one of the most rewarding jobs in the world, isn't it? And it's also one of the most challenging because of all the hats that we have to wear. We must be a curious learner, a problem solver, an entertainer, a judge, a dolphin. We'll come back to that one. My education training began in my childhood. I was born in Florida in the USA to an elementary and middle school teacher and a tutor. And that was just my mom. My dad is more of a numbers guy. He's an accountant and he's a weekend warrior. My dad runs and bikes hundreds of miles every week. My dad is a beast. And when I was almost five, my little brother was born. I like to believe that my family taught me a thing or two about being a teacher. So did being a big sister. So today I'd like to take you along my life journey and show you the hats I've worn and the lessons I've learned from wearing them. So we're gonna go back in time to when my mom forced me to enter the high school band. I had never auditioned for anything before, but my parents believed in building character through experiences. So like any teenager, I was nervous, uncomfortable, and so angry at my mom for forcing me to leave the house, ugh. But it ended up being one of the best things I could have ever done. I learned my, my first lesson, that sometimes your parents do know what's good for you. Bands became my life. I learned lifelong, or made lifelong friendships. I learned the value of teamwork and communication. And believe it or not, I was a pretty shy kid at the time, but bands forced me out of my shell. I learned the beauty of working in a collective group toward a shared goal. And I ended up really blossoming, coming out of my shell. And I became the clarinet section leader as well as the historian for the bands over the years. So from being historian, I learned to enjoy the little moments. And from being the section leader, I think that preparation is key to success. We're gonna fast forward to my university graduation. I graduated from the University of Central Florida in Orlando with a degree in advertising and public relations and a minor in writing. I followed a trail of sales and marketing jobs over the years, working at a variety of marketing and advertising agencies. I worked for the Florida government for a stint and in a uh, recruitment at a university that specialized in media and uh, entertainment. I had some wonderful experiences and not, some not so wonderful experiences, but whether I was at my dream job or a nightmare, I learned there's something to learn from every experience. So stay curious and keep moving forward. But my biggest dream come true was landing a job at Disney, where I worked in market research for five years. I started by researching demographics at the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, and I eventually started interviewing guests about their experiences. Actually, one memory I love is meeting a South Korean family at the Magic Kingdom one day, which was so cool meeting someone from the other side of the world, right? But little did I know where I would be today, the one from the other side of the world. I wore a lot of hats at Disney. I worked in onboarding, recruitment, marketing, training, and eventually made my way to corporate and consumer insights. Um, but one of the biggest lessons that I learned at Disney was it's about the value of people. And Disney is re uh, revered for their guest service experience. For example, if you buy an ice cream and you immediately drop it to the floor, there will be someone right there handing you a free replacement ice cream, awesome. And that's what we call a magical moment. But what you may not realize, it's, it's not about the free ice cream. That's not special. It's the look on your face when you get the ice cream right away for free. So therefore, a magical moment is not tangible, but it's something that you create for others, the way you make them feel. So I want you to think of a magical moment you've created recently, maybe with a student in the classroom or maybe with a coworker or a co-teacher. Just bringing someone a cup of coffee can make all the difference. To me, it's about thinking of how to make magical moments every day. But who knows why dreams change? You can be completely satisfied where you are in life, and yet you'll have a creeping thought. 
a yearning for a new experience, a new opportunity, and that's what brought me here to teach English in Korea. Now, at that time of my life, Disney had taught me a few values. First, education. Making magical moments to make the world a little bit better. And embarking on new adventures, like I told you about my family. It's about developing character through experiences, right? My life came full circle when I met with my university band friend Danica at Live Chase on Hey. And in that moment, I had told her about my dream of working at, in Korea. She had worked at DYB. Over a cup of coffee, she connected me to DYB. And that became a magical moment that just kept on giving and changed my life forever. So I decided to trade my bosses, a mouse for a joy maker. Dr. Song always talks to us about lessons of gratitude, and I find that it comes from the most unexpected of places. Gratitude grows in successes and failures, right? So I'd like to share with you, if I may, a few of my DYB gratitude lists. First, I am so grateful for my coworkers, my co-teachers. They are some of the hardest workers in the whole entire world. I'm grateful for my wonderful students, and you know, as students and teachers alike, we do our best in the classroom every day, and we become better people for it. I'm grateful for the HR team for making us feel at home in our, uh, in our home away from home, and I'm grateful for Dr. Song, who is the captain who sails us through any storm and can do that as well. Now, I've been working at DYB for about two years and teaching Athena for most of that time. One of the things I love about Athena is, of course, we're reinforcing their speaking and writing abilities per the circular system, but they are at such a crucial age of their lives, aren't they? They are learning their own identities. They are navigating social, the social world, which is so difficult during this pandemic. So we can teach them the values, the abilities, and skills that will carry them from middle school and beyond, put them outside of their comfort zone, like my mom did to me when I was in middle school. I'm grateful for my adult students. I, worked, I have worked in Della program for seven months now, teaching adults, and they are some of the most focused and passionate learners. Now, I can say they are, they are at a different stage of their lives than our children students are, but we can still make a difference in their lives. And I'm grateful for some of the amazing experiences I've been afforded at DYB. Recently, I participated in a Makali making workshop for the DYB Window Magazine uh, with a few other DYB teachers. And you may or may not know, I'm a vegetarian and I don't drink alcohol, but here is what DYB has taught me. It's not about what is at your table, it's who is at your table. So I'd like to close with the things I could only learn at DYB first. Kids are like little lawyers. They will make their case in the courtroom of your classroom. If you are unfair or if you act opposite of what you say, they will object, right? So the most effective way to build trust in the classroom is to be fair and firm with them. I've learned to say yes to new opportunities. Now, if I hadn't done the things that scared me, I wouldn't be here uh, in Korea. I wouldn't be teaching Athena. I wouldn't have had some amazing Korean memories, like hiking some of the most amazing mountains, or my proudest physical achievement, riding a bike from Seoul to Busan. On the topic of adaptability, my grandfather always used to say that the only constant in life is change, and boy, has this pandemic proven that. But with the leadership of Dr. Song and the support of all our DYBNs, we've been able to overcome anything. So I've learned that adaptability is survival, but also your support system is survival. So keep relying on those around you and give your support back to them. And finally, remember that little bit about the dolphins? I've learned that teachers are like dolphins. I learned this from a book report written by an Artemis student. She had read a book called Whales, and as you can imagine, she'd written all the fun marine animal facts that she had learned. But here was her last sentence. I think that dolphins jump because they are so happy to be dolphins. Well, teachers jump too, don't we? We jump into the line of fire. We jump into uncertain situations. We jump for joy when our students understand a lesson. And like dolphins, we have to come up for air sometimes. Dolphins work hard and they play hard. And there's something magical about being a dolphin. But there's also something magical about being a DYB teacher. So I think that teachers jump because they are so happy to be dolphins. Thank you so much for coming on this journey through my life. And happy holidays, everybody. All right. That was absolutely amazing. Um, 
I just want to give a couple comments on it. The first thing that I really, really liked is I thought when she mentioned the value of people, I thought that really resonates with me because DYB has always been about the people. And I think she has picked the best company she could work at. Um, I also really, really enjoy the dolphins analogy. Mm. I, I've never really thought of teachers as dolphins, and I was really interested to see how she could tie it back, and I just thought it was absolutely beautiful. So thank you so much again.